Good afternoon, everyone. After covering the massive floods in China yesterday, I wanted to follow up on the locust swarms that are now arriving in China. They're starting to eat through the rural countryside crops out west in Yunnan province first. The damage in the corn is discernible. It's going to pass through as the floods sweep by. It's going to be the cleanup to the vegetation knocked over by floods. And speaking of things knocked over by floods, some of the all-time record rains in Japan knocking over a 1,200-year-old cedar tree. Stories and legends attached to that at the shrine. And with the exceptional cold sweeping through South Africa, game reserves turning to meat sales. Tourism down. Price gouging up 1,600 complaints. Just in June alone of basic food products. Unscrupulous business between the farm gate and the supermarket. In this day and age, it's so important to keep your body functioning at optimal performance. And collagen may be the closest thing we get to a real fountain of youth. After all, collagen is the most abundant protein in your body and essentially the glue that holds it all together. When you're middle-aged, you're only producing half of the collagen that you did in your youth. My focus is about digestive health because the change in our diets from foods being unavailable, moving to seasonal availability of foods, and the entire spectrum of availability of foods changing. There's so much more to talk about with the benefits of collagen. You can visit healthwithadapt2030.com to learn more. The link's to the description box below. And since we are going to be talking about stories of old and legends, comets portend bad omen in Chinese society. Always have, always will. When comets come by visible in the different chairs of heaven, disaster seems to strike the country. And we're seeing exactly that with the most historical floods recorded in the last 400 years across China at the moment. But in the wake of this, out west, coming into Yunnan province from Myanmar and ultimately from India and then further west out towards Central Asia, the locust swarms are arriving in China. This is the density. And if you watch a few of these videos, you'll be surprised on how the sky turns very dark as these massive swarms are now making their way into the croplands. And it looks as if these locusts haven't transformed into the swarm yet. We still have the green, what you consider grasshopper. But they are quickly starting to transition into the ultimate eating predator. A glimpse at what's happening with just the amount of locusts right now as they're coming through, eating into the different corn crops that they're encountering in western China. Especially this area in Xishuangbana, which is southern Yunnan province. Seems to be an intense hotbed of activity right now with the locusts. And what it looks like as they damage the corn that's already grown that would be for human consumption. You can get a good indication on how they're eating their way through the corn crop. That would be destined for more local village. This wouldn't make it to the international market. This would be a very local area in a village, but you can see their yearly crop has been destroyed as well. So the village farmers or the villages themselves that rely on this to get them through the year are going to be looking elsewhere now, which will also be pulling on the supply because this is going to be happening to tens of thousands of village rural areas. And as I reported on the floods yesterday in China, 400 year following on the grand solar minimum the last time they had these massive floods was the collapse of the Ming Dynasty. But this matches up exactly with the weather system behind all these record-breaking catastrophic floods in China and Japan both. So it's an Eastern Asia continental flow, and you can really see the density. Yellow is the highest rainfall total. So when we look far west over there at Nepal, and we've seen the massive floods in Nepal, we India as well, that matches up perfectly with this. But then when you come up Eastern Asia, you get those blotches of yellow right over the Three Gorges area up into Japan. So I'm going to take you over to a Shinto shrine here. That cedar tree you're looking at is between 12 and 1300 years old. And this termed a Shimboku, a sacred tree, has fallen due to too much rain. This portends a massive change. When you get 1200 year old trees toppling the largest floods in possibly Chinese recorded history all occurring at the same time. There's something very ominous happening across Asia as a signal to us, the rest of the planet. We might want to look deeper at what's happening there for what's going to be sweeping our continents as well. 
Massive tree falls, smashes right in the middle between homes. Didn't even damage anything. Very minor damage. Nobody hurt. Again, they were considering this a miracle that such a huge tree fell in a residential area and minimal damage. That was just a blessing in itself that that size of a tree didn't crush people in their homes. But this type of weather system, they call it a May which is the East Asian monsoon, but this time it's locked in place. So these record-breaking rainfalls in Japan, for example, over on Kyushu Island, which is southern Japan, highest rainfall totals ever recorded, ever. Now, you, you know Japan's got some incredibly detailed, very lengthy climate records. But to reach the highest rainfall ever recorded, again, they're going back to something like 800 AD to find matchups in this kind of rainfall. So we're seeing it in two countries where they're going at least on the multi-century scale, going back to measure rainfalls that are unprecedented. This matches up with the grand solar minimum quite easily when you're looking at these 400-year durations, 1,200-year collapse of the tree. That would take us back to 800 AD in the Tang Dynasty. Now, there's a legend behind this as well. So 1,200 years ago, there was significant climate change going on there as well, grand solar minimum related, where there was a super massive, incredible drought happening. Now, the white snake, a symbol of prosperity in Japanese folklore, was sighted. And when they saw this white snake, they were following it, and it disappeared into a crack under this cedar tree when it was a smaller tree. And when they found it, there was a spring, a freshwater spring there that saved the village. Now, this occurred a second time as well. So this tree has been protected and revered because the white snake's been sighted twice, coming out of and going back into revealing springs that have saved the people there from massive droughts. So it's happened twice, which is the second grand solar minimum. See, these legends are marking when the grand solar minimums occur, showing you this super massive, incredible climate change where this drought that was wiping out villages can actually be corroborated in cosmic ray data, tree ring data, and now we have the legends and folklore that also back up the time frames and science that say significant changes were happening at different intervals in time. And I'll bring this chart here that I put together a few years ago. The Chinese dynasty collapses on the grand solar minimums. Now, right around 1200 AD, we see the Jin dynasty collapse along with the Mongol invasions really started. That's because the climate up there changed as well. So the Mongols were like, we can't grow food. We can't do animal husbandry where we're going to go conquer and take food. So bring it into the modern era, supermassive countries with large militaries that can't feed their people in starvation mode are going to do what? Go out and find it. Maybe take it. Maybe pay for it. Maybe not. And as we come through to the right side, the Ming Dynasty collapse, that blue line there, that's matching up with at least the level of floods that are happening in China right now. You can do your own deep dive into why the temperatures rose two or three degrees Celsius up and down, up and down, up and down through history until the present day. Also, following up on the sugarcane, frozen solid in South Africa, this was an outlier. This is a tropical area, but it got so cold that the sugarcane froze solid. And when they stripped it off, obviously the water inside had turned to ice along with the cellulose or pulp inside the sugarcane there. And what this is causing down in South Africa is a disparity in the amount of food being grown and the food making it to market. They've had huge wipeouts in crops, fruits, vegetables, grain. South Africa's struggling this year. As well, last year, they weren't having such good yields. But this year, it's really in earnest. It's so noticeable. And what's happening now is the food price gouging for basic necessities and basic food products. So think about this. What percentage of people complain about something to a government agency that get ripped off in a store or a business? Probably less than 1%. So just in the month of June, they had 1,600 complaints. Now, these are people that took the time to actually go fill the paperwork, put their reputation on the line, be identified as reporting on some of these farmers and businesses who have much more power. So it is borderline dangerous to report on this. But still, 1,600 complaints. And if you do the multiplication of only less than 1%, or let's say even 1% of people are complaining, this is an enormous amount of complaints here. It's the highest recorded amount of complaints they've ever had. This is about the essential food price monitoring. Now, the basic price of food between the farm gate where the farmers are growing it and the stores at the retail end, 
there's something going on in the middle where these price rises are so exponential above what they should be that you're going to realize quickly those who grow food are now growing currency. You will pay whatever they demand that you pay for the food. This is a great investigation into how society is going to move. Now, the same thing with China. These most massive floods in the last 400 years have wiped out their crops for the year. So China's going to be on a massive buying spree across the planet looking for grains, specifically starting with rice, inter Asia. But then once they move out into the international market for more soy, corn, and wheat, could international buyers demand them pay a higher price if they're going to buy on that volume? Why not? Now it becomes a seller's market for food. Those in demand that are hungry, retailers and farmers know you'll still pay it. And in the same magazine site here, Farmers Weekly, they had a really interesting article on how game reserves are turning to meat sales because the tourism is downturned, so there's no revenue coming in. And the families living on the game reserves that usually benefit from the tourism, the income, the tour, you know, they act as guides. All that has collapsed into nothing. There's no more tourism. So in order to continue to raise money, they're moving to commercial sale of exotic animal meat from the park itself. Government sources say that it is now generating additional income that is much needed. And since the focal point of the article was on Sumkanda Park, I didn't realize it's 59% of the country's private game reserves and ranches are selling these exotic animals now, almost 60%. So you see how the switch has gone in meats as well here. So now roll this out over the next few years. When we get the food shortages, people are going to need to generate different income, but you can see the food choices are going to change as well and the possibilities to use a different resource of food to generate income or to eat. Humanity is very ingenious. We're not going to go quietly into the night on these changes. And I talk more about where our economy is moving as well as the food pricing, how governments are posturing, and how our society itself is being distracted on purpose during these changes in the grand solar minimum that you're witnessing right here. Three articles about changes from the grand solar minimum pegged to the exact same timelines. And the grand solar minimum climate economy and history I talk about on Patreon forward slash adapt2030. You can join me over there where I put up Patreon only content. It's a full venue for those of you in the Grand Solar Minimum Awareness community to stay connected. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video, and I will see you next time.